All right. Hey, hey, everybody. Good to see everybody in the chat. Let's get the obligatory was going. Someone needs someone needs to mute the stream. <laughs> uh oh, feedback. Right. All right, everybody. Um, thank you all for coming out tonight. We just want to go over Lone Star, touch on our expectations, um, realize and actuate our expectations, see where we actually landed compared to what we were hoping to do. And mm -hmm. we do have a guest star on, Kelpeg. He is the winner of Lone Star, uh, took it all with... He is. The brand new hot, the new hotness, Flesh Eater Courts. So, I'm Joe from the Weird Cast, Austin Weird Knobs, Eli. I'm Eli. Cool. I'm Go. Eli. Y'all know me from Weird Cast, Weird Knobs, Internet Things, General Lizard Man About Town, and recent Rat Aficionado. All right. Kel, do you want to introduce yourselves? Yeah, uh, I'm I'm Kel. I'm from uh, Roll to Wound and south houston and i'm sure y'all met me throw, run around and play the tournaments right so you've likely seen him play as ghosty boys until now right and then he decided to go to a different death faction as all death players tend to do they played I mean, some early i had to play them both right. <laughs> i mean he picked a hell of a time to swap death factions um he's like oh, i'm gonna go 5-0 lone star oh hey Everything in Nighthawk just got two inch reach. What am I going to do with that? <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm excited to pick up some uh, Battle Works uh, movement trays to use that that two inch night <laughs> to stack range. Right. Oh, I'm sure oh. that'll help out a lot. <laughs> um, speaking of Battle Works, uh, we do have some repeat visitors in chat tonight. Um, if you were there for Lone Star List reviews. Part one and two, your name has been entered into a wheel. We love wheels on this channel. To win a $50 Battleworks gift card. Um, and we're going to get those out tonight. Now, there is going to be some stuff. Brian. So, that'll Sorry, be... I'm just showing off my rats to Brian because he's uh, he's giving me shit in the chat. Well, we have uh, audio issues. Audio issues. The site can get me into the trash bag. God, I hope so. so. It, it, it can. If you crash my website, if you crash my website, that's that's okay. I will get out of you. Oh no, that's the channel now. Where's Justin? All right. Okay. okay so let's kind of get into it. Um. Okay. Okay. Ah. Share cards doing this thing. We'll get it figured out. Meanwhile, I will just uh, you know cut the pieces to base materials with. Are we getting a better from chat? Is chat giving the thumbs up? So Vince says it's better. That's one person. Is it better for other people? Right. Or just Vince. I have shitty ears, so like you know, <laughs> I can't tell. I can't tell anything for shit. I listen to too much loud music. Okay. So, um, good now. Hell yeah. Uh, we run Discord Better through OBS, <laughs> right? We run, uh, we run, we run Discord through OBS, and that gets really fucky sometimes. But so, uh, here we are. We're gonna recap Lone Star. So let's get into that tonight. Let's uh, do it. Let's talk about our expectations going into this. So, I'll start. My expectations were pretty low. I lost a bet. I got a randomly generated Gargan army that turned out to be pretty good. I was hoping that I was hoping to go 3 2 so I could meme on everyone that 3 2 is the baseline minimum any Gargan player could achieve. So and that's how did what you do, Joe. Well, spoilers, I didn't go 3 2. <laughs> but that's that's where I was that that's what I was hoping for. I was hoping for a 3 2 and a little bit of fun. Uh, Eli, what did you what was your expectations going into Lone Star? My expectations, I was going in, um, 
to, I was going to four one minimum. That's what I wanted. I, yeah. uh, I had been playing the new Seraphon Tomes since it dropped, and I felt like for multiple GTs now I was right there at LVO. I was at the three one table playing for the four four one, um, and I've played so much destruction that's just like not a great matchup for me. That I was like, I'm ready to just hopefully not play destruction because it's like a quarter of the field. Spoiler alert, that didn't happen. <laughs> and the plan was to go for one. I wanted to finally get the four win with this tome and um and get back in the four win column because I've had a year of just three twos. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh Kel, <laughs> uh you won the tournament, but did you think you were gonna do it? What was uh what was your mindset coming to the Lone Star? So I have been playing the new FEC since before the tome released. Uh, I think Brian joked that I've been playing you know the book's been out for a month and i've been playing it for six uh i've been prepping for this event for a while i really wanted to go 5-0 lone star's a really big event with some really good players that show up every year and i wanted to to show my show my charms at kind of a bigger event not that slambo wasn't great it's just i know how many people show up to lone star every year it's yeah. almost it's it's a big one so i wanted to show that i could do well so my goal was 5-0 and i didn't get there yeah, no, what a way to set a what what way to set a realistic goal there, Cal. <laughs> Coming fresh off his Slambo 5 0 champion win. I'm gonna he's gonna try to 5 0 the next event. <laughs> right? I mean, if he can get a ticket and 5 0 smash, that would be pretty sick. The year of the Kel. Right. <laughs> I'm so, not gonna lie, I'm all about it. Oh, I am too. Like more deaths need five O's. Not so old light, they need to stop nerfing that army, but you know, nah, other no, death no, armies. Keep, keep nerfing it. Agreed. Right. All right. So, so one death army I don't like. <laughs> so let's uh let's talk about how we got there and our expectations and how those panned out. So I ended up finishing two and three. So I am smoother brained and probably smaller brained than your average guardian player. My uh my day one was really awesome. I got to play against Sinto for the seventh time, and I am now seven and zero against Sinto <laughs> in our round one at GTS. And look, nobody's going to beat him eight times in a row, Joe. You know, unfortunately, we were joking because I'll be I'll be participating with the event coordination for um, Smash. He will not have defeated me through the entirety of third edition, so I'm really worried that fourth edition our rules are going to reverse. And I'm gonna spend four, four, four years just getting my ass pounded. <laughs> <laughs> no, what's gonna happen, Joe? Is we're gonna need a ringer, right? Round one. <laughs> right. Save me from Sinto. And, and and I'm not I'm not gonna say there's magic in, the, but there might be magic in the air. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um. So game two was actually against Eli, and we had a, nu- a nail biter of a game. Dude, it was close. It was. Uh, I think I we ended the game 23-26? It was 23-26. to 26. Yeah, I was oh, not wow. happy going into that game. <laughs> no. Not because it's you. <laughs> because it's your army. Right? I mean, <laughs> I I had the best possible scenario to win it. Um, you know, it was what? No risk, no reward? It was no reward without risk. And yeah. you had Mega Gargants with the Cruel Boys were... Regiment of Renown, mm-hmm. and I was playing Starborn Seraphon. Yeah, so <laughs> um, Eli took first turn, had a really awful first turn, uh, had a really awful turn two, and then my man got his fucking Saiyan power boost and uh, just manhandled me turn three, four, and five. So, <laughs> lost that. That's what, that's, but... what I, that's what I did to your Gargans. <laughs> Right, uh, I will say I I lived the dream. I power bombed a Bastilladon into a chokehold, into a roar. So that was pretty sick. It didn't help. It didn't help. You didn't win priority at all. No, you don't. Need I to won be- every priority. I think two of them were on tide rolls too. Yeah, you know that's that's how it goes. But. Game three was against Alex, one of the Sparkle Motion guys. Uh, 
what are the Oklahoma City? Is it? I think it's Oklahoma it, City. It's kind of a mixed bag. Okay. It, it's like there were some people from Oklahoma, OKC, some people from like Arkansas, and some people from Kansas. Mm-hmm. Um, so very like Midwestern coalition. Uh, so played against him, and I won that game. I had no right to win that game. He failed three six inch charges, and after killing Broad in a gate breaker, we just kind of Benny Hilled around the map because we had um, that like corn skull fortress terrain. You know, it's like the size of a shoebox, it's like two feet tall, uh, and that was just all over the place. So he could never really get to me because it was all impossible. So I come out of day I come out of day one, two one, feeling great, almost almost there. Better I get, than we've seen in a while. Right. Better. It feel, better feel good to be back in the wind column. It did. <laughs> day two rolls around. I get paired into Nick. And this was kind of my like, I can't believe that just happened to me moment. One drop Slanesh list, and we were you know, we were laughing at it. We laugh at Slanesh. It's been nerfed into the ground. Just kind of paying for the sins of books of yore. But Nick flies at me from like 24 inches, makes some like 3d6 rerollable charges. Siggy gets two combats. He immediately jumps to like 26 uh, depravity mm-hmm. off of um, whatever the thing that like gives you depravity from the guy. Temptation in dice. No, no, not that, not that. Not that? The Euphoric Killers, there we go, Euphoric Killers. Oh, that. So yeah, um, deletes, a, uh, deletes a gate breaker, bottom of one, gets the double, kills Broad, and at this point he's almost at 40 depravity. That sounds and, very reminiscent of way old Slash days, because I know you weren't around, but Kel, were you around during those days? Oh no, I'm, I'm only oh. in this position, basically. Okay, yeah, because old old Slanesh blitzed you, did about that much damage, and got that much depravity. That sounds very much like OG Slanesh. Yeah. <laughs> I know you were salty. I could remember if Kel came like right at the end of second or joined third. <laughs> yeah, this shit was bad, though. <laughs> and, um, it's really funny, you know, we, we talk about like really bad games, like I just sat there and rolled dice. You know, I didn't really have much control, but that was the best part about losing to Nick. I didn't even have to roll dice. Um, <laughs> like the minus the minus one armor save from the Seekers plus the two red from Siggy. I didn't have a save to begin with. So like I just was like, all right, I'll use my fingers and I'll count to 35. There you go. New level. <laughs> um, how ki- how kind of Nick to let you <laughs> to do that for you? Right? I mean, it was bad. I had to get the toes out there for a second. Broad's got 40 fucking wounds, and I ain't got that many fingers. <laughs> um, you got to lo- that on fingers and toes, though. Right? I lose priority of the two, and Nick's like, that's it. Uh, it was so funny. He didn't even, like, do you want to concede? My man was like, the game's over. <laughs> <I'll go wild."> <laughs> <laughs> um, Drop the mic on you. <laughs> He did. He's like, pack it up, man. You fucking hoes. <laughs> uh, and I was like, you know what? I am indeed hosed. So I got to enjoy just a casual three and a half hour long lunch. Wow. Right? You don't want to lose a game that fast. That's why you came by my table so early. Right? I think you were uh, just starting your hero phase. Probably. <laughs> Yeah, if you didn't uh, come by halfway through the game, that's still true. Right. <laughs> so, game five rolls. It's against Dylan Cochran. Uh, he and I are both tired. We both want to get out of there. And we're like, run it down mid. And he's like, yeah, run it down mid. <laughs> <laughs> so, I go second. I pick the two side objectives because I'm not a bitch. Uh, <laughs> He walks onto it with his uh, OBR. I walk up. I pop all out attack. I pop my triumph. A gate breaker gets into um, gets into Catacros with just a plus one to ward and plus one defense from his uh, his command ability. Yep. 
Um, I pray for Rend. I get it. So here goes a gatebreaker, fully juiced into Catacros. I'm like, I'm about to smash this nerd and his posse. Uh, Dylan then picks up like 14 dice because I connect with everything but one flail. And Catacros walks out of that turn taking three damage. Like, <laughs> my man just like flexed his shit and just like took it on the chin made so many five up on six up armor saves it was insane catacros uh, man right and then after that you know obr does obr things he does like 60 damage from four morga the dude <laughs> i kid you not natterite weapons goes he swings with three morgast and gets six morgast worth of attacks through that sounds about right yeah I I can't stress how much I hate this fucking army. <laughs> but I would know I have faced Dylan playing with that army for practice many times. Right. Uh, but yeah, we go two rounds. We run it down mid. He runs it down harder than I do. And that's it. <laughs> that's so, it. That's it. I pack it up. I walk away with my two, three. Uh, we high five. I squeeze Dylan's butt a little bit. And, you know, I went home. I remember you played that game so fast because I was legitimately in the middle of my hero phase turn one when you came over. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, we, dude, we were rapid fire in place. And that was with uh, game five getting started so quick because we knew each other's armies. Yeah. <laughs> no, like like I said, we, we ran it down. But yeah, no, that's that's me. Uh, Eli, why don't, uh, why don't you take us through your tournament? All right, so day one, first match, I get paired up against Iron Jaws on Geomantic Pulse. I'm like, okay, this is going to be rough. We got 18 inches government mandated separation, and you know how much uh, coverage the pigs get? Uh -huh. 18 inches pretty easily. We're both two drops. I win the roll off, so I choose to be attacker, let him set up the board. We had a little bit of a um, a funny moment where a lot of our train looked really similar, so we had to kind of finagle what would look, what would be our wild woods, <laughs> and like what terrain we would treat as just like invisible, but we can kind of go through it that way it would like be functional. Mm -hmm. And he sets it up, smart iron, smart enough iron jaws player to leave his like charge lanes open, but of course I take the first turn. My list is designed to do that. I throw a troglodon up. He's minus one to wound. He's minus one to hit. He's got plus. Uh, plus one to save. Cool. Early part of the game, I'm not rolling hot on my command points, but I'm setting up my castle to kind of be in, hold the front. Runs it down, does a bunch of damage. I end up winning priority. I do a lot of damage back. Actually, I don't win priority round one. That's the hard part. I get doubled one to two. I lost my troglodon bottom of one. And then he went into the Bastilodon, top of two. Mm -hmm. The Bastilodon, however, takes six damage on the mortals from all the charged mortals between the Mockrush and the pigs, and takes four damage the rest of the game while I wipe out the rest of his army. I double him two to three, and that was a wrap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> As it do. As it do. Uh, Pulse is a hard map for Seraphon, especially into matchups like that that are aggro that can swarm the objectives and kind of hold them for rounds two and three before I can get on them. But I can usually hit the endpoints, and I try to hit both endpoints so that no matter where the Pulse goes, I can reach it. On to round two. It's against you. We talked about it a little bit. You took my Bastilodon. <laughs> Absolutely manhandled the fuck out of that thing. I deploy with the Bastildon right in the corner. I try to place it so that a Mega Gargant has to be within Blizzard range. Unfortunately, I deployed just a little too far back because you were able to put just within three inches, but just outside 12. So I lose a Bastildon immediately. <laughs> Teleport yeah. done. Like you said, shit goes bad. <laughs> I still get my battle tactic, though. Thanks to an Arcane Bolt killing a Beast Cure Killbo with one wound left. Not the last time that'll happen. <laughs> no. Um, round two also still goes bad, and I have Mega Gargants in my face, but I managed to hold them off long enough to win priority into three, to do 12 damage via Comet and Deliverances to the Gatebreaker, and Blizzard Broad for exact damage to kill him. 
And I'm like, okay, I'm in the game. I'm good. I'm holding off. We're still having a close game. You dropped an early tactic that kept it. That's what really kept it close. You bring a man crusher gargan down. I get killed with magic again with an arcane bolt with one wound, and that kind of just seals it. Yep. <laughs> I'm able to wall off and keep my grand strat because slam go away. I can't deny yours because I can't kill a mega gargan that's going to run and charge every turn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> game three, I play against a cool. Cool guy named Ryan Givens, I believe his name is. He's fairly new. He's been playing about a year, I think he said. This was his first GT. And he's what I've affectionately been calling Randy's Disciple. <laughs> because the list he played, I'd seen it about 12 times. <laughs> because I played Randy a lot. It's the exact same list I've seen Randy play. And I'm like, cool. This is going to suck because Kragnos... But I think I know. I think I can do it. I I think I can pull it off. One and two, turn one and two go really well for me. I kill four. I kill all four rocket. Uh, all four of the tyrants, rocket tyrants. I kill the iron guts. His only threat is Kragnos. Kragnos charges my troglodon, rolls box cars on the mortal wounds, <laughs> just blasters oh, wow. it for thirty six damage. <laughs> <laughs> Moves in, is close enough to Blizzard on bottom of three. But I roll a three on the dice, so plus two to five with only one primal. Not going to get the blizzard off. From that point. <laughs> Sorry, I saw the chat said the Randys are replicating. <laughs> oh, I fucking hope not. <laughs> I don't need more of that list going around. We've had enough of that shit. <laughs> And basically, at this point, we're having a, we're still having a close game because I'm able to spread out some tactics. There's some skinks slap fighting some knoblars in the corner. It's very funny. Um, and we're like only a couple points within each other. But another priority win by Ryan near the end basically makes him able to smash into my castle without me being able to do anything. I pretty much lose the slant. I need to keep priority through the last couple turns in order to win by like one or two points. And he wins priority, smacks into me, takes my grand strat, wins by three. Or, sorry, wins by six. It's a very close game, but he manages to pull it out. So I'm 2-1 going to day four. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to win. I'm going to just win two games. This is going to be it. Round four, I play against one of the Vex bottom lists. Not not Shelling's bullshit with five of them. It was a more well-rounded list. It only had three Vexlers, had a Knight and Cantor, Lord and Puritan. Punch of Annihilators and the Quest of Swallsworn, Soulsworn, what the sixth block of like big dudes. But he, well, he had played Seraphon earlier in the tournament and kind of dumpstered them. He did not understand, like nothing, not to insult him. He did not realize just how much like forward projection I could have on turn one. And I took out two of his Vexlers turn one and five of the Quester Soulsworn. He has a rough turn one and turn two. His turn one, he had taken three damage from Maelstrom, healed two back on the Night Encanter, and then miscast to do three damage back. (laughs) So he's got one wound left, and I went priority to end up killing it. He doubles me two to three, and I made a mistake in that game. So round two, I kill the encanter, so I have no, so he has no unbinds. But I forget to cast my spell with the troglodon, which makes me go uh, end my turn with seven cosmic power points. So when he charges in with the bastildon, bottom of two, he kills the bastildon between mortals and hammers, annihilators with hammers doing their thing, and leaves a hole open to get to croak, because I didn't get to summon skinks there because I was stupid. <laughs> um, Eli, not to interrupt. Uh, yeah. Cherigra, can we get Battleworks uh, link info in the chat? Tickets are going live in five minutes. And we are about half sold out now. So <clears throat> make sure to get on those guys. Okay, anyway, continue, Eli. Back to back to that. So I'm getting double turned. I got a hole in my, in my castle. Um, what happens is he ends up moving some Annihilators forward to try to get a better charge. And I redeploy with Croak five inches behind the SARS guard to protect him, which is great for me because he chose Reprisal as his grand, as his uh, 
as his battle tactic that turn because I killed his general with croak. And that redeploy a skink stars here forward. So he ends up charging the stars here. The stars here bravely gets punked by annihilators before I then table all his annihilators when priority to finish off his army on every step is forward. Round five, I get, I am, I'm nervous for my parent going to round five because I'm sandwiched in between Randy and I didn't want to face over again. <laughs> and our friend, contributor to the stream, Matt Robish, playing his 20 Blood Knight Castellite list. Mm -hmm. And I get paired into Matt on Power Flux. Where I'm a two drop list. Matt is like four drops. We've both played this game. We played this game before with these lists. There's a couple changes. He got an extra Vamp Lord. I switched out a hero for another for a Bastildon. But we know. We set up. We get going. Turn one. I kill I kill two Blood Knights. Fail my battle tactic because I didn't kill the, the Vampire Lord on foot. Because Matt managed to unbind the Maelstrom. And another either Comet's Call or Deliverance. I do like five damage to the Vangorian Lord, though. Couple damage to Vordry. Kill a Felbat. Dogs stay underground. Got a Bastillon on the side objective because Matt activates the sides. Bastillon in the side. Trogodon's up here. Kind of with the idea that Matt could either charge Blood Knights into the Bastillon that he's not going to do damage to because it has Mystic Shield on it. Or he can charge the Trogodon and hope to crack it and expose all the way down. He charges the Trogodon, does a decent amount of damage to it, but not enough to kill it. He fails his charge with Vordry. Vangorian, uh, he had moved Blood Knights up on the right, and I redeployed six inches back with Skinks. Fails the charge with Skinks with the Blood Knights there. And the Vangorian Lord, who wanted to charge heal, is kind of stuck. He tries to make a long bomb charge, just on the chance that um, she gets there. Doesn't get there. Not a problem. Kind of not a priority for him at that moment. I went priority to two. And I have a hero face so hot. Vangorian, by the way, is down to three damage now. Because he healed two damage across two hero interventions. I kill the foot vampire lord to get my battle tactic. I kill eight out of the ten dogs that he summoned bottom of one. I kill... 15 of the 18 leftover Blood Knights, 15 or 16 of them. Again, the Vangorian Lord and another bat. Matt is left with four dry, two Blood Knights. At the end of the turn, Matt is left with four dry, two Blood Knights, and three dogs and a fell bat. Yes. Bottom of two, four dry charges the Troglodon, puts him to. 12 damage, doesn't kill him, retreats the dogs, rallies two Blood Knights back, though. That was pretty good. Um, but those four Blood Knights kill nine out of the ten skinks that are on the objective. And I have and I had a command point to inspiring presence. So I have pinned his only two hammers when he wins priority into three, and he gets a battle tactic and just concedes. Dang. It was wild i had a few hero phases that hot but it was it was pretty wild <laughs> matt is a good player and i have to be on my a game even uh even with any kind of list that he's bringing just to just to not get punished <laughs> yeah absolutely and so i hit my 4-1 and i was really excited to win best order uh because i didn't win it last year i was in the running for it but um but I lost to Steven De La Garza. He was running deep kit and got it over me. Uh, so it was really cool to, to walk away with like my first piece of hardware. Maybe next time I'll get the 5-0. <laughs> Wait, your first piece of hardware? Like that's, that's I've it? never won a trophy oh my <laughs> of any kind. I didn't know that. I, assumed, yeah. I just assumed you had. The only other one that I would say was like a piece of hardware is I won one of those like plastic medallions at Adepticon two years ago for Best Seraphon. But I was like 60th place. <laughs> <laughs> and the only reason I won Best Seraphon is because Sam Gould won an actual award and he was running Seraphon. 
<laughs> so yeah, I didn't really feel like I earned that. This one I feel like I earned, <laughs> which is really cool. That is cool. That is cool. And you you did well. Like, what'd you end up? Was your fifth, sixth, fifth place overall? Yeah, there it is. right behind Randy. It was uh, my highest placing I've ever done. You're really good. I saw really you cool. all out there. It was nice. Hopefully, next time on a top table, maybe against you. You want to run us through your tournament since I'm taking over host duties now because Joe uh, absconded apparently. Yeah. Um, so my round one was against Alec Anders. Anybody's met him? He's a great kid. He's uh, just just fun guy to be around. At we went at the uh, last Dallas uh, Lone Star, not the Lone Star Open. I think it's what it's called. Uh, the one uh, in July. Yeah, the one in July. Yeah, the Frontline Gaming event. Uh, the, the, the Lone shares. Star Open Outlaw GT, whatever, whatever we want to call it. Yeah, so I played. <laughs> I had met him originally there, and he was wearing a Willy Wonka outfit. And so I was, I was helping judge or TO during during that. And he was hilarious. He was great last year. That's awesome. Um, but I got him first round this year, and that game. Involved me building my little feck castle wall that I do of basically ghouls on the outer line, knights on the inner, and, and heroes even further in. I moved okay. up the board, took the took the middle hold area, um, and basically pass turn. You know, so I started generating no bleed points and pass turn. Uh, he went uh, charged his uh, boingrot bounders into my royal beast players, which had a bunch of defenses on them. Mm -hmm. uh, they lost a few guys, which is not a big deal for Royal Beast players. If you know what they do, they're they're designed to lose wounds and then gain all of them back. Yeah. Uh, so they get, I, actually, I, they get buffs for killing monsters too, right? They don't get buffs. They're just good against month. They just uh, oh, okay. reduce the damage monsters do and they stop their their monsters actions. So very strong against monsters. Um, but he he dealt some damage to them. Uh, and kind of moved his each moved up. He had three pairs of boingrots. He moved one into the beast flares, and he moved one on either side of the map because as it was um, it was pulse, pulse. Yeah, so he was preparing for the pulse to come out on either side. Uh, I won the priority, and I went. The beast flares basically gained back the full health because you pull the models that are two, three wounds first, and then when you bring them back uh, with my, I have two. Arc regents in my list, so they bring back three serfs at a time, so I can bring back uh, three, six. Right, because, you, yeah. because your recursion doesn't care about boon total. It cares about keyword. It cares about keyword, yeah. It just says yeah. bring back three serfs, and the, the beast players are bring, can bring back up to seven wounds out of three serfs kind of thing. So I brought them back. They were, they were durable, uh, but then that turn was basically already the end of the game because the beast players moved out of combat. Uh, I had a, whor a group of horrors charge the left flank uh, of Boingrotz. I had a pair of horrors charge the right flank of Boingrotz. And then I had my uh, Gore Warden and the the uh, Morbeg Knights drop in, get a D6 move for like five inches and get a four inch charge on Scragorot, wipe him. Oh. That's gross. And the middle, the middle group of Boingrots died to what would be my first of like a hundred blizzards during that tournament. So, Kel, did you get a? Did you get your ticket yet? Uh, I have it, but uh, hopefully my roommate is getting it for me. Okay. Cool. It says there are apparently less than ten, 10 tickets left, so you may, you may. You hopefully, may hope do a little texty text. All right, okay. Vince, says uh, you got your ticket. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you guys. <laughs> okay, continue. Yeah, so so that was my game against Alec. I I, I want to say we could we could, we did continue. He wanted to keep playing, but the, not to be mean, but there was nothing really of any substance that happened in that game after that point. He lost Fair. all his boing grots. He would bring them back through the shrine, and then they would just instantly die. He basically had God of Blues hiding behind the shrine in like a two inch buffer zone that I couldn't get really horrors into, just screaming. Uh, and flailing wildly, hoping that I didn't get back there. <laughs> um, round two was against his dad. Um, 
fucking taking the whole lineage out. Taking the whole family. Yeah. Well, bloodline decimator. <laughs> I, I walked up to this. I walked to the table and he said, Hey, uh, my son says I have to beat you. And I said, well, <laughs> I'll give it a shot. Spoilers. Um, Spoiler alert. <laughs> so he was running the list from Elvia, like the winning list from Elvio. Um, which I had I hadn't paid attention to Elvio. Oh, the Everybody kept list? Yeah, the city's list. Okay. The city's list. I had no idea how the list played. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what it was going to do. I was just going to go into that game doing what I normally do with my feck and just hoping for the best. So it was, uh, is it, it's every step is forward or, or which one was the second mission? So let me bring the second play. mission was no reward without risk. Yeah, no reward without risk. So when you get to play in combat. And that was, that's a perfect mission for me. It's five objectives and I can start on three, basically. Yep. And so seeing what he had on the table... My idea was, let me just put, let me build my little castle like I always do with my feck. Let me start my chaff units all blocking in the, the three objectives I'm on. Just do I'm it on the middle do... of the table instead of on the end. Exactly. <laughs> I'm gonna, and then I'm going to sit here for three turns doing my tactics that don't require me to engage. And then hope he runs out of tactics that has to engage before I do. See, I, I like that. I want to also do the same game plan, just not against Gargans. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's my general game plan with, with Feck. It, it, the, the army scales so incredibly well with noble beat points. If my opponent takes three turns to engage me, I've also won that way, too. Yeah, so, that makes sense. By that point, I, if they haven't engaged you in three turns, they're probably not killing your horrors or your ghoul block. Exactly. Or if they do, they're just coming back. Yeah. So... I set up on that position, and let me tell you, if anybody has ever complained about the tech that Corn has access to, Cities making me feel like I couldn't do anything that I wanted to do, was that list was brutal. I just, every time I would do something, he'd be like, okay, on a four up, nope, you didn't do it. Or like, hold on, let me flip a little token, and that says <laughs> no, and... Uh, so I just I, I spent that game sitting in the middle, hoping I could play. And then I knew I had to keep the beast flares in the middle because he had some sort of murder griffin that everybody kept warning me about. Yep. That would just come in and do a million damage. Uh, so I kept the beast flares ready for that because, you know, as I said, they're going to reduce damage. You're going to stop monster sections. I was terrified the entire game that he would move the 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 murder griffin to a flank side and then just bank on a double turn and shoot it into my heroes and back up. Yep. That never happened. He kind of tried to play KG like me. And so what ended up happening is I just was, I, I not longevity him. Like he just, I would start bringing stuff in and hitting stuff. And he would finally engage back and I would just keep recursion. So that game was like a slog, but it, it ended with, with, with me pulling it out just, the, the murder griffin never died, but it did fight beast players for like four turns. So that's honestly a pretty good position for you to be in. That is yeah. not what the what the griffin wants to fight. The griffin wants to either take out the horrors or punk all your little heroes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I was scared to death of it. So I, I always had them. I basically I, bu I buffed them up with a defensive mystic shield, uh, charnel conviction for a five up ward. And then they're on objectives that I control, so they're starting at a plus two to save and five up ward. They charge in that thing. If they attack, if they attacked it while at defense, so they're three up plus three to their save, and they've got a five up ward. So, like, they just were too tanky for him to take down with it when, when he's getting the minus one damage and no monstrous action. And they just kept him there, and every time he'd leave, I'd run back into him. Yeah, and no monstrous rampages for a griffin is uh, not great at all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, my list had tech in it specifically designed to deal with counter charges with, with the wall. And that was something that his list relied on a lot of counter charging. So being able to set that up and then being able to just do what I wanted to and not have things run into me really helped. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, game three was rough. Uh, Byron was a, a good guy, but uh, just his, he didn't know a lot, a lot of different rules interactions. Mm hmm. Um, the big one that started the game off was he started all of his Nurgle guys on all of the points, 
and then there's apparently some sort of neural tactic that requires them to that has them take a point that they don't already control. Yes. And so he was like, "Well, no, you don't control points. You stand on the start of the game." And I was like, "No, oh, man, you definitely do." <laughs> you you do in fact control objectives you stand on to start the game. Uh, that was not true in second edition. That was added in third. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so he he was like, "Hey, can I just push all these guys back?" And I was like, "Man, that's like your the entire army. You're basically having to redeploy." Yeah. Yeah. And so I was like, "It's too it's too deep, my guy." So we couldn't do that. He gets a little upset um, later on. Then, I did drop the wall on him, the uh, the cadaverous barricade for anybody who knows spec. Um, mm-hmm. It it is an endless spell that turns into a terrain feature when it hits the field with a scenery rule, not an endless spell effect. So he had he had uh, wizard finders. It dumb. <laughs> and and he was very upset that he didn't get to use his five up spell again. Nope, because the scenery rule. Not an endless spell effect. Yep. Nope. And so he um, he was very upset at that point, and kind of he and so he he goes and he starts uh, he he rolled his his uh, plague bearers just straight into my army, assuming their their durability would keep them through. But he basically he rolled a box cars, and he he strung them out through like a unit of horrors, all my heroes, and like. Like my beast flares, so they took just an insane amount of damage. All my heroes got up like six noble deeds. Uh, it, that game was on like turn two. I was just maxed to the gills on noble deeds. There was like not a way that I was going to struggle through that game anymore. Mm. Um, so he kind of got a little tilted and that, threw that game a little bit with that position. So that game didn't really end up being too crazy. So day one, I ended three zero, um, and then going into day two, I knew from the end of day one that it was going to get changed. And that was that was a list that actually scared me from the from the night before. There was, there was a few lists that scared me in the tournament. It was James, uh, Eli's, and uh, Chris's. They were lists that were going to be good against my uh, enough damage with through a burst that could either kill my heroes or put me into a position where I just didn't want to be in. Because I can't confirm. I've played Feck a few times and their heroes don't last long in our matchups. Yeah. I actually have never played against uh, Caster Seraphon, so I had Vince play against Eli on Friday <laughs> so I could watch the game and not give away any of my tech. Vince mentioned something about you wanting to watch it and realized that was why. That was exactly the reason why. <laughs> I wanted to know how you played without giving away any of my secrets. That's <laughs> filthy. I love Which it. is funny because I knew all yours because I played against Feck before. Well, maybe um, not all of them. Maybe not all of them. The Beast Flayer tech was uh, was something I wasn't wasn't aware of. No. <laughs> uh, so day day two day two started with James West, absolute monster of an opponent. I feel I I went in that game knowing if I made any mistakes on my positioning, he was going to capitalize. I did win uh, Defender, which made a big difference because we were on a board that had no forests, so everything was line of sight blocking. Everything was blocking. So I built little whole little walls just to be like, okay, I'm gonna set beast flares and ghouls here. If he charges them with the Vanguard, sure he kills them, but like he's not getting to my horrors and I mean, he's not getting to heroes. You know? Like he's not can't double file into heroes. Right. Uh, uh, that game it was a long fall of us just fighting in combat over and over again. He didn't win any priority rolls, even when he did his his special Archeon thing. He he didn't win any priority rolls. The Beast players never got to Archeon. He he tied them up with Vanguard the entire game to prevent them from scooting over there and locking Archeon down for the entire game. Damn. Um, again, another game where I, I had like I did like three blizzards. Uh, I killed Vanguard over and over again with blizzards. That's what uh, he mentioned to me after the game. <laughs> I, I think I cast fifteen blizzards in that tournament. I it just that. I Feck had a Feck has a huge problem with it can't deal with um, low armor saves. If you're if you're a two up, if you're a three up, it's really scary to, for the army to play against. Yeah. So right before list submission, I changed my grand my general command trait to the plus one to cast, plus two to cast if he's six noble deeds. And okay. I've never looked back on that because that gave a, a access to Blizzard. To just I'd, I'd roll a nine and then it'd be an eleven. And be like, okay, I'll just roll. Oh my god! Yeah. So. Trust me, I know how it feels, man. 
<laughs> Plus two to cast at least is a hell of a drug. It right. really, it really is. <laughs> Some of those games too, just standing, having him stand next to an arcane for the entire game, and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I got a 12 inch bubble of death around me, baby. Yeah. Um, yep. So that game, exactly that game was go. was really tough. It, it really came down to a lot of missed rolls by James. He couldn't chew through a whole set of horrors. They live at one health. And then suddenly they're back at three or four models. <laughs> and then the other ones died. And then the next turn they came back because by the time we're really deep in engagement, I've had two or three turns of doing the heroic noble deed point. So the heroic action noble deed generator, and I'm just bringing back units when they die. Yep. Mm-hmm. So it was still, it was still, it was still probably the toughest game from a standpoint of like actual like tactics, gameplay, what I'm doing in each individual moment, even though my next opponent scared me more at any given time. And that was <laughs> round five, and that was KO. Um, he had 15 Thunders and an Ironclad, and then he had 20 Arcanauts split between 10s and a unit of uh, six Soul Sworn. They were mentioned earlier. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they just, they just formed a triangle around that boat as it moved her across the field and just shot at my stuff. And no matter how durable you think your army may be, there's nothing that can stand up to 15 thunderers and an ironclad. There's just nothing. It's just not possible. Oh, 15 thunderers is still one of the scariest units in a game in the game right now. Easily. And <laughs> it's, it's one of those things where like, no matter what tech I used or dropped or what I did prepared for, I was always just waiting for the shoe to drop and just a double, like, white half my army off the board. Uh, eventually, he did get the double, and it was too late in the game because I'd already taken off piecemeal uh, a bunch of a bunch of his units. The big, the big sealer in that game is he dropped two tactics. On turn one, he went all in on trying to kill the Beast Flayers, which had Mystic Shield. They were standing on the objective they controlled, and they had a final board. He went all in on trying to kill them with the KO tactic. He left them with one beast flayer with one wound left, and failed that Crazy. KO tactic. Uh, they're they are they can be incredibly durable. He, really, he didn't get the thunders out of the boat, so the only rend he had on them was red dwarf. Mm-hmm. So, I think if he had had any more, lost that unit without a doubt. Uh, but he would have been in a bad position to drop. So he had to kind of make that risk, and then turn two. He did another KO tactic, which was remove every, uh, have every enemy unit not within 12 inches of an objective. And right. Yeah, blast at, everybody at, off. Yeah, and then at the end of the turn, I just piled in some ghouls over into mm-hmm. it. He cleared everybody off, and then I noticed there was ghouls that were still alive that were in range, and I just piled in. And so oh. I, I stopped that tactic, too. So he, he, he had something like three or four points going into turn three for him. So it, he was on a big deficit. Um, so even if it, even if anything had come by that point, I was already by turn three, I was at 12 points and he was at something like six or seven. So at that point, he's looking to hopefully table you and just hold objectives long to scrape a win. Exactly. And so like with that game, I, I, I threw my Morbeg Knights just basically at the boat at one point, because I was like, I've got a point lead. Let me just throw things at him to like slow down any like cha- like if he's gonna double me i want him to have to deal with these bats first and then move to me rather than just shooting flying into the middle of my territory and blowing everything out that matters right so that was how that game went i i took a, a strong lead points lead early on and he just couldn't catch back up eventually the boat got blizzarded as all things must be the ironclad everything, fell everything the needs blizzard. to feel the feel the cold embrace of an icy wind Yes, and that was that was where it ended. Basically, once that boat got hit by Blizzard, it, it I think it took like twenty wounds right up there, sixteen wounds like that, and just fell over. So it was that was it. Damn. <laughs> and that that was the end of the tournament for me. I was just I was excited. Yeah, I remember coming by, seeing that you won, and and giving you a big pat on the back. I was really excited for you because. You didn't win a golden ticket for Slambo. It was too close to the event to uh, to have golden tickets, but you finally got one here. So this is actually my. Got the win. I got I got a I got a golden ticket from Lone Star last year too. 
Uh, oh, you did? Th- yeah, two of the people couldn't make it. Uh, and then obviously one of the people uh, lost their place. Oh. oh, tickets got passed out. I actually did get one last year, but my current school district uh, denied my PTO for those days. How dare they? Yeah. Very uncool. <laughs> Super <clears throat> uncool. All right, Chair Grot, uh, bring Kel's list up, please. We'd like to go over this. Oh, wonderful. All right, so, fact, Hollow Morn. What does that do, Kel? So, Hollow Morn is the faction designed around the knights, which the knights are the Morbeg knights, as it's in their name, mm-hmm. the crypt uh, flares, and the crypt horrors. Those are the okay. three knight units. And if you take, if you charge with any of those knight units, then they get plus one to their damage, with the exception of mounts. Mounts do not get plus one to their damage even if they are knight units. So, Morbeg knights, only the riders get plus one. Okay, so horrors and war bags, what we're going to focus on and support for that. So delusion, defenders of the realm. Which one's that? Uh, defenders of the realm is the plus one to save. I you actually choose your delusion at the start of the game, so I could change it up if I wanted to. But I wanted to put it on my list in case I ever forgot to tell somebody, mm-hmm. and they did, they wanted to pull the oh we didn't you didn't say it so you don't get it. It was always on my list to know that's the one, and it's the plus one to save while while your units are contesting objectives that they control. Did you change that delusion at all through the game, or did it stay pretty consistent? I I will say I have only used that delusion not only in this GT, but in every single other game of of Age of Sigmar I've played with my feck up until this point. I've never used another delusion. Really? Yeah. Huh. Not even for like uh, for the feeding frenzy. I, you know, if 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 I would change it, there would be a few lists that would change for it. It would basically be maybe against Cruel Boys, maybe against um, Seraphon. Mm-hmm. But I don't think it would be the Freeing Frenzy. I think it would be the plus ones to charge. That, yeah, that makes sense in those matchups. Technically, the Delusion that gives you plus one to wound against monsters should be good against Gargants or any monster-heavy list. But I just feel like Feck has too many other ways, especially in my list, to get plus one to wound that I'd just rather have the plus one to save. Yeah, that makes sense. I have seen a feckless play, like watch like a feckless play against Gargants with the plus one to wound delusion, and it just it does just mop them off the floor. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, so we know which delusion we're going to be taking most of the time. Uh, free plus one to save. Typically, when we're going to need it is pretty good to have. Um, going through your leaders. We have double arch region, and from my understanding, that double arch region is kind of like where you start when you're building your hero package. Yes, arc regions right now are probably the most overpowered unit in the book. If you, so compare, if you compare their point costs to them being a two cast wizard, to the fact that they res either one knight or three serfs at the start of your hero phase, the range of it being 18 and not being wholly within. And the fact that their War Scroll spell bonds really well with you when using something like a Cool Warden, or even just bringing units back to life, I think they are dangerously undercosted. It's the equivalent of the Stars here in Seraphon, and why you see a lot of um, meta Starborn lists taking two Stars here. That unit, they're they're units that are just extremely efficient at their point cost and just bring so much bang for buck. Mm-hmm. Um, so Feverish Scholar, what's that command rate do for us? A Beerus Scholar gives him plus one to cast, unbind, dispel, you know, the whole rigmarole. Okay. Uh, but, it, but then it gives plus two to that when he has six Noble Deep points. Okay, that's pretty sick. So, Deranged Transformation, Blizzard, Horror Frost, Deranged Transformation. There's a reason why we're seeing these three spells across these two wizards. That spell is so good. Right. It's also a little bit of a statement about how bad the other um, sex spells are. I would just rather have uh, Deranged Transformation locked up than put points into just the other garbage spells that Beck has access to. Yeah, because each of the lore is only three, right? Three three spells, three prayers? That's correct. Yeah, you don't have much options. <laughs> so, the Gore Warden makes sense when we look deeper in the list. The Herald, 
the courtier and Gormain, what are they doing? So the herald is my priest. Uh, he, he specifically, you can only make a uh, courtier's priest. And the Meryl Scroll Herald is a courtier, but his special, his claim to fame is that while he is within uh, six inches of five or more uh, feck models, he is, he line of sight can be drawn to him. So okay. if he's within six inches of five or more feck models, he's basically invisible. He can still be targeted by stuff, and obviously things like melee don't have to require visibility, which is a common set, misconception I see with people all the time. They always ask me, oh, I can't hit him in melee, and I'm like, no, you absolutely can. Okay. Um, you can hit people through a wall if the wall is thin enough. Exactly. <laughs> so he's an invisible priest, That's and that's why he's there. He's just good there. Eternal Conviction is a five-up ward to the unit that he cast it on. It is an 18-inch holy within range. Mm -hmm. uh, the Gast Courtier is an 80 point tax so that I can run Wizard Finders. He is <laughs> he is terrible. I used him to block um, just deep strike lanes the entire event. I he never died somehow. <laughs> he is four wounds, he so he doesn't even died. He never died. <laughs> it wasn't worth people's time to look at him. I love it. I love Amazing. It. So I just put him in lanes to be like, please don't deep strike over there. Or if you do, please kill him. Right. Uh, <laughs> uh, Gourmain is is basically my tech for if I was running into a list that I couldn't just do my castle up and sit on three objectives when I needed to reach out and touch somebody. Gourmain's got four different abilities. They're all triggered on a three up, and all, the range is infinite. He just has to be able to see. It's okay. all line of sight based, and mine just sits in yep. the tower the entire game, generating noble deed points and pointing at people and being like, "Put a debuff on them." Turns uh, out uh, tripling the height so that you can get line of sight across the whole board is pretty good. Absolutely, absolutely, it's great. Um, he has got he's got four of them. One of them gives uh, gives an enemy unit plus one to be wounded. One of them gives an enemy unit plus one to be hit, but you have to have an ab for it within three inches of that enemy unit. Right. One of them gives an enemy unit plus one to all damage it takes, but it has to have killed an abhorrent that game. Mm -hmm. And then the last one is everything in your army, everything in the fact army can run and charge as long as it ends a charge within half an inch of the unit. Okay. Uh, and that, again, that was just tech for if I ran into a, a shoot heavy ranged army, maybe like uh, Dodge of Cain, or yeah. if I played Eli. Yeah, okay. you want to because you want to close the distance as fast as possible and put the pressure on exactly. Them. Uh, chair ground, scroll down a little bit so we can see the rest of the sauce. All right, so 20 crypt ghouls, 12 horrors, six morbid knights, and cadaverous barricade, plus the block of 20 beast flares. So Pretty good. we should know what most of this does. Um, I think most people are kind of surprised by the crypt horrors, mostly. So they shouldn't quick... be. They shouldn't the, be. The uh, horrors so... are the horrors are the bread and butter of this list, right? <laughs> so hopefully, Kel can uh, ensure that no one is surprised by them again. What do they do? So crypt horrors are a very cheap unit at 130 points for three for 12 wounds. They have a five up save. In fact, everything has a six up ward like any death army. Um, they move seven inches. Uh, they heal D3 wounds at the start of every one of your hero phases. And sixes to wound on them cause an additional damage. Their attack profile is four attacks each. Uh, fours to hit, threes to wound. Zero save, or zero ran base. But if they're with it, wholly within 18 inches of an abhorrent, it's minus one. If they're within nine inches of a courtier, it's minus one. Okay. Uh, so, but they're damage two, damage two base. So if they roll six to wound on in base, they will go to damage three. And of course, with the sub faction, if they charge, they're going to start at damage three. And if they roll six to wound, they will be damage four on that attack. Disgusting. Yeah, um, they're in. They're durable. They're relatively fast because when you add in something like deranged transformation to give them plus two movement or uh, gourmet to give them run and charge. They can really reach out and touch somebody when they need to. Mm -hmm. um, 
their their big weakness is modifiers, especially modifiers to hit. Four up, four ups to hit, they're not great. They and, and there's lots of ways to give somebody a nice one hit, make somebody hit on fives, especially when they have four attacks per level can really break down the, the damage. And yeah. that's where that's where Horfrost and things like damned really pick up this army. Um, because that that is 90% of your damage and like Horfrost is carrying horrors right now. Yeah. yeah. Horfrost is really good on horrors and ghouls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we've kind of touched on everything. Uh, we know the interaction between Morbeg Knights and the Gore Warden with the extra movement. Uh, we've talked about Beast Flares through some of your games and their surprising durability and the rate at which they unkill themselves. 20 Crypt Ghouls. They die, they come back, they stand on things, they stand in the way. Any uh any hidden tech with the crypt ghouls? Uh no, the ghouls the ghouls are basically there because I couldn't put these flares there. I uh I don't particularly <laughs> like the ghouls, but I like that I need more screens because I don't really want people hitting horrors. So I have the school the ghouls there, they die, they come back somewhere else. Usually designed I have two surf units because there is a FEC tech that requires you to have a Surf unit, a Knight unit, and a Courtier unit all contesting the same objective. Right. It was previously called United Court. I think it's called Ties of Chivalry or something like that now. Um, I, I called it United Court all throughout the GT, and everybody that was using the app was like, I don't see that one. That doesn't exist. And I'm just <laughs> like, well, that's what it's called, man. I don't know what you want. <laughs> uh, the app's wrong. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. So I, I I would use it constantly to uh, to to complete that deck. That's the the big other reason for the ghouls and the beast players is they are surf units. Okay. So if I am starting feck, I love the idea of charging, huge damage. I like the more big knights, uh, and I copy and pasta your list. <laughs> Where what should I be doing at the start of the game to kind of set myself up for success? Because it's that initial deployment plus how we handle movement in turn one that really kind of fucks us or does it. You know, what, what's the game plan here? So turn zero for me always goes about the same way. I set up my... Uh, I, since I know I'm always going to put Gourmet in the tower, tower doesn't need to be that far up. It's usually kind of almost sitting almost sitting on the edge of the board. Edge of the board just going to look at things for the rest of the game. Um, after that... I, I kind of build a wall of heroes behind it, usually measuring where to where you want to be 30 inches out from where those could be, because you're usually going to go first with a list that has like 12 drops, mm -hmm. so you're going to want to do magic behind this. Um, you, you back up your heroes. I usually have two a layer of the horrors in front of that, and then in front of them I have the uh, ghouls and beast flayers. Ghouls take one flank, beast flayers take the other, kind of building a little castle around my army. It serves two purposes, one obviously being because I don't want people to just come and live inside of me, but the other is uh, the heroic action for, there's two heroic actions that are effect specific. Mm -hmm. One of them is some sort of oration that you measure uh, all, effect, all other effect units within 12 inches of a hero. You roll a dice for that hero equal to how many there are uh, that don't include them, and on five ups you get noble deed points. Okay. You, you're going to do that, I think I didn't do that maybe four or five heroic actions out of this tournament it wasn't it's 90 percent of what you're doing okay so I mean, the heroic action is so good and so functional to what your army does it makes sense exactly exactly so uh you're you're setting up so that you can start the game get a boatload of dice hopefully get two or three noble deeds on that hero that you want like for me it was on my command on my general with the command trait that, that is at six he gets plus two to cast so if he got if he got four and then I cast his two spells, he's at six now. So when my opponent goes, he's now at plus two to unbind any other spells, plus any uh, wizard finder bonuses from uh, or uh, Antorian Afterlife bonuses like extra primals and stuff like that. So yeah, you're setting up. Uh, Fact doesn't need to move fast, so you can you can move slow. We have multiple tactics that don't require engaging the opponent. Uh, one of them being glorious feast, which is uh, or something around that line. Which is just have everybody in your army within twelve inches of somebody with, uh, no, uh, with six no bleed points. Yeah. It's very easy to do. Um, you could that, that's easily it can be an easy turn two. That could be a 
possibly dangerous turn one unless you just have everybody crowd around the throne and you have the throne be the uh, heroic action. Or you just do uh, magic dump into that and you don't have to engage. Let the opponent gate gate like let the opponent make their mistakes first. You're setting up defensively, you're taking your buffs like plus one to save by just sitting on points. And you're you're waiting for for them to get to make a mistake because you don't need to. Right. Whew, excuse me. Let's see. Um. So you know we kind of talked about the lack of rend on our big damage units. Um. Your game four was against James, and your game five was against Ko. Most of those armies are on three ups. Uh. If you're going after the Thunderers, you're gonna have even more even more negatives. What do you, how do you approach a armor heavy skew? What's your game plan to tackle that? So usually in Age of Sigmar, especially when I was playing Nighthawk, when I went all in on something, I would, I would try not to spend myself too thin. Mm-hmm. But if I don't have access to Blizzard really cutting up some of that high save ability, then what I want to do is I actually want to engage in multiple fronts. If they, if they, because I want them to have to choose where their all out defense is going to go. Yeah. I mean, it, it doesn't matter if you're a three up save uh, going to a four up against damage four attacks, you know, like you're going to fail enough of those that you're going to lose the unit. Like, yeah. it's, so, you know, I, I, I would buff up a def- one of the flares def- or whores defensively, hopefully, probably the one that's taking the, going to take the more damage and then just kind of spread myself a little thin in hopes that, that one of the units is going to pop something out of the way, even if he defenses the other one. And then set up to maybe Blizzard on the next turn that I get available. Okay. So don't. Uh, I I see a lot of people, myself included, sometimes. You know, when I'm on the back foot, I will laser focus my army at a threat, hope for the double, try to laser focus at another threat. And you're like, spread it out a little bit, drain their resources, damage four will do the rest. Resource denial is still very strong in this game. There's actually some tech you can do with the cadaverous barricade um, and charging a unit. And then a lot of times you don't want to pull in other units in the combat because you don't want them to come bop you for yeah. free. Mm-hmm. But the cadaverous barricade caps all movements that are done within it within three inches of it from almost three, three inches. So there's been plenty of games where I will put the cadaverous barricade next to a unit that I want to get into combat, and then I will charge another unit and have my unit charge and pile in within three inches of that unit mm-hmm. because the max distance they could then pile in would be an inch and a half. Yeah. And for one-inch models, they can't even attack back on that. Uh, it was something I used against the KO to make sure that I didn't lose into the mainstream. All right. <laughs> so going over your list, we're bringing six heroes. They all seem relatively important. We have a ton of really powerful hard hitting units. What is some of the tech uh, that you're using to catch people off guard with this newer book? Uh, obviously, the Cadaverous Barricade is a, a very strong little spell for its cost. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, it, however, 20 people, points. It's 20 points. 20. 20 points. But you have to get, like um, something I didn't mention earlier with Gorman. Gorman's abilities only last on the turn he's using. He gives an enemy plus yeah. one to be wounded, but it's only that turn. It's, it's not until your next hero phase. And Cadaver's Barricade can basically give you the same one. Yep. Yep. As, as strong as it is, as denying retreats and charges and like that, you're basically only using it the turn you summon it. Because as soon as it goes around to their turn, it's gone. It's a yeah. five to cast. No, unless if, you fail, if they fail that, they probably lost the game. Because that's how strong it can be if it stays there. And yeah. it's not predatory uh, either, right? They can move around it. They can avoid its range. Yes, yeah. To they an don't extent. Have, they, don't, they don't have to, uh, to, to go through it or anything like that. It's, it's, it stays where it's at. It just has a pretty long range of 20 mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the tech in this list really comes from, you know, more Knights being able to drop in and move D6, anything coming back towards from, from the, any of the board edges and moving D6 is a big, big one. Um, for the barricade, just the fact that um, the, the wizard finders was something that I put in my list hoping to have a five spell ignore. Mm-hmm. But, Flares or horrors with six attacks from Feeding Frenzy and Wizard Finders against something like Kim or Glock can ended up being really valuable. Just even more damage on things that already do a million damage. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but uh, I did find myself a few times using the other effect heroic action, which is uh, on a three up, you can move D6 uh, inches and you can move that as long as you end that move closer towards an enemy wounded hero. Okay. And that, that can be used to remove you from combat. So I did use it to remove me from combat once, uh, but you do have to roll a three up and then roll usually another at least man on the three up. It's not a really good heroic action. It's just I didn't have anything else to do. Yeah. It's an option and sometimes yeah. that's all that's all you need. Okay. All right. Well, that's some pretty valuable insight into what we were talking earlier before we went live. Might be the first reported Fec five O. Might be. Yeah, I, I, I have to look at the stats. I talked to Wilhammer Peter and um he said at least until up to up to the other day that he hadn't seen any other Fec five O's. So, so probably so you might legitimately be the first uh undefeated Fec player at a GT. Yeah, possibly. Which, hell yeah. <laughs> right? That's awesome. Right? It is absolutely sick and we expect nothing less from Texas players and Houston in general. So is there a... I know Check you're getting Texas good at Sigmar. Right? I know, I know you gotta go soon, uh, Kel. Is there anything else you want to say about your list before we uh return you to the wild? Um, just that I think Feck in general is a very strong book to play what you want to play. I don't really <laughs> want to play monsters. Uh, <laughs> so like if you want to play Feck, explore what you enjoy in the, the army, except for monsters. And really find what you what you want to do with it because I think surfs work. I think knights work. I think you can play hero heavy. I think you can play hero light Nusharan. And I think this this army has the tech to play around what you want to do and play it. The only problem with zombie dragons and terror guys right now is they just cost two points. Yeah. Even after the points decrease, you feel that way? The points decrease was just to bring them in line with soul. So it actually wasn't. Damn. Right. All right, Kel, thank you so much for giving us your time tonight. I know that you're busy and you got a lot of stuff that needs to get taken care of. So if you need to hop out of here, we fully understand that. All right, guys, thank you so much. No problem, brother. You take care. Love you, and we'll see you in two months. And congrats on winning the whole thing. All right, buddy. (laughs) Bye, y'all. Bye. All right, so uh, that's that for Kel. Um, We have gift cards to give away. Yeah. So, chair grot, bring us to the wheels. They and can hold on. In addition to that, let's shout out Joe, uh, our followers from when we were not on camera, our new followers. Oh, yeah, let's get those followers shouted. Shout out to Crossfade24, Super Chris84, Texas Wargamer, Armored Panther, APOC360, and Space Ninja XD. We really appreciate you throwing some support our way. We're happy to have you here. I know some of you have been in the chat and are still here. We really appreciate you sticking it out. For sure. All right. Wheel time, baby. Wheel time? I love this part. Wheel time. Everybody Uh, loves a good wheel. Whether that's spinning the wheel, make it a wheel move. (laughs) We've been alive for 123 minutes. 123 minutes? Something like that. That is not what that says, Joe. Well, okay, an hour and 23 minutes. That is an hour and 23 minutes. <laughs> okay, okay, Mr. Math Guy, what's 123 minutes? Over two hours. Okay, we haven't been alive for that long, right? <laughs> but it's whatever it is, it's plenty enough time for the chair grot to have actually done this. We've been live for 83 and a half minutes, Joe. All right. Wheel. All right. Spin that shit. Spin the wheel. <sighs> Why are we still waiting for this? Spin that I don't know, man. It's going to be fun. We just are. We just are. I'd laugh if Kel got it. It would be really funny. It would be pretty funny. Classic Guardian player math. Hey, Ben R. Jammin, which is I believe right. our, our our boy Ben from Houston. Yep. 
Congrats, right. you have a $50 gift card to Battleworks.com. That's Battleworks with an E. So the way this is going to work, uh, I'm going to DM Ben. Uh, and if he does not respond in 48 hours, I'm going to keep this window open and spin again. So oh. uh, watch out for uh, if y'all get some DMs. Uh, we'll be waiting. He apparently got the last ticket as well. What sweet hilarity. Wait, they got the last ticket? Ben Excellent. apparently got the last ticket. <laughs> All right. Um, Eli, we got 15 minutes before we got to call this. Do you think we can lightning round top 10? Let's do it. All right. Chair Grot, bring us to the top 10. With Chad just like cutting us off right at 9 o'clock. <laughs> Hold on. I got I to gotta fix the... I got to fix the opera. Get it pull up on PCB. That way I can look at it. So I sent him the link. We should be able to get we should be able to get top ten in front of us. Yeah, you know, I also have the app. I can look at it myself. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we all know who won the tournament, Kel. We went over his list, mm-hmm. we talked about it. Um second five oh Thomas our boys from Colorado, oh, yeah. Thomas from Weekend Decadent with the Skaven. Um was he Doom Wheel or Warp Lightning Cannons? Okay, so he had a mix. He had a couple Warp Lightning Cannons, a mm-hmm. butt-ton of Rad Ogres, and then Clan Rats, a Hell Pit, and a Hero Sweep meant to maximize things. All right. So, like, he has a Grace here with Skaven Brew to get plus one attacks on whatever unit he chooses. It's really good on the Rad Ogres. And Death Frenzy, so when the Rad Ogres die, they fight. <laughs> All right. And buffed rat ogres fighting and then dying and fighting again is pretty damn good. Especially when they completely die and the master molder rolls a three up to bring them back. Mm-hmm. For a command. Done. Can do that once per game. I don't even know if you need the master molder. Master molder might let you just re- I'd have to double check. It's been a minute since I've looked at that side of the book. For the rat ogres, ogres, is it mm-hmm. once per game you can attempt to bring them back? Once per game per unit. Per, once per game per unit. Okay. Cool. Per unit of rat ogres, yep. Um, so when we uh, when you guys reviewed this because you had chaos, um, did you see this as a final list? Me, yes, absolutely. Yeah. I, when I looked at this list and knowing that Tom has played a lot of Skaven, I I saw this list able to do well. I really liked the um, the varied threats between the triple plague priests buffing themselves on their prayers. You could essentially get great plagues on two ups mm-hmm. to chance. So like turn one. You're, the first prayer you get is probably instantly getting a great plague, and then you're getting the reroll chance. So the whole rest of the game, you're rerolling all your prayers, and you can do a bunch of stuff that way. Okay. There's some. Uh, there's some that just do a bunch of damage to everybody. Do like it's it's a bunch of mortal wounds. It's awesome. Yeah. Uh, on top of just being able to guidance and heal your other. There's a okay. lot of utility with three foot plague priests. Okay. And they can stay. Um, and they can stay near the clan rats and then just not be visible to shooting, right? Yeah. The Grace here on foot, like I said, buffs the rat ogres or buffs the clan rats or whatever. The warlock engineer is the spry hero that turns on the warp lightning cannons mm-hmm. so that they roll 12 dice instead of six. And But if they roll ones, then they do damage themselves, which is why the heal comes in handy from the uh, from the plague priests. Okay. And then that- it also knows hoarfrost rupture is some anti endless spell anti um Okay. Well, An- anti cron spine tech, because honestly, in this in this kind of list, none of the scryer spells are really that useful. You could take yeah. warp shield, but it's not really needed. It, more and more warp power is definitely not needed, and nobody takes chain lightning. I mean, you can still rupture an endless spell, right? Yes, you can. All That's those damn pendulums. Why it's super? Why it's super good? You can make the caster take damage no matter where they are on the board. Because all, right. all you care about is where the endless spell is. Sick. It's some sweet tech I've been wanting to play. Um, it's been some sweet tech I've wanted to play for a bit with Seraphon, but no. Yeah. But then, yeah, he's got a six block of rat. He he's got, I think, just three four blocks of rat ogres. Okay. And Doran acolytes, wizard finders, the works. It's a very, um, it's a very varied list that can handle a lot of threats in different ways. I really like it. It rewards the some really solid gameplay. And Rad Ogres are just fucking cheap as hell, man. <laughs> right, well, fuck yeah. Go Tom. Uh, 
five vote was Skaven. I love to yep. see it. So let's get a uh, let's go down to third place. Well, hold third on. Third place, we, we've got we got a, we got a thing. Are we going to do the wheel now? Yeah, let's go ahead and do the wheel now because I've informed that we're spinning the wheel a second time. All right. Oh yeah, that's right for a second winner. Let's get that second wheel up. I, I was Hell mistaken. Yeah. I thought we we're only spinning it once. So let's see who gets it. Yep. I hope it's Ben again. If it's Ben again, I'm respinning. Danimo twenty five. Danimo hey. twenty five. Our boy Dan. Hell yeah. I think he was here earlier. He that's a uh, that is our boy Chris Schelling, who was our host for the Chaos and Destruction. Our co host for the Chaos and Destruction uh, right. list review. He's right there yeah. in a chat. Uh, Dan, yeah. okay. do, do you want this? If not, we can spin again. We love spinning wheels on the show. <laughs> Rewarded for playing Vex Bomb. Oh, sure God. Oh. All right. Let's, let's not talk about him getting rewarded <laughs> for Vex Bomb anymore. And uh, let's talk about third place, All right. which is Seraphon. Third yeah. place is Fangs of Sotek in a slightly different direction than I went. It's got the core hero suite that you're used to talking about that much except for the fact that the command trait is different because he's going with a full set of endless spells mm -hmm. so he's doing arcane might so the slant can control all of the endless spells and when he casts them he doubles the range and since he brought not just maelstrom but also grave tide and pendulum which is probably my favorite spell suite of endless spells that i would still bring if i had the points for them in my list yeah. he's able to just have a lot of varied threats everywhere the grave tide's great Obviously, I'd use it to preen zombies and uh, block OBR and other spots from getting where they go. Uh, Maelstrom is just Maelstrom; it's super good. And then Pendulum just cleaves. Yeah, he's got less board presence than I do, but in exchange for that board presence, he's brought again the spell suite and then Rippers. He brought three Ripper Dactyls that go noom across the board between. Mm -hmm. um, between speed of Wanchi to make them move 12 inches in the hero phase, then another 12 inches, charge, uh, use the Blotto to get the extra attacks, Horfrost on them to make them like twos to hit, they're hitting you with a bucket of stuff. Yeah. And then, <laughs> one, well, because he failed a six inch charge. Yeah, fail charge on like Ripper Dactyls or something is going to really hurt. Mm -hmm. And they just go in. And the Terra Wings can just drop, uh, it can run across the field as well and potentially deny command points from the shooting phase on. So that you don't get like un you don't get a lot of defense and all that kind of stuff. It's really good against it's a bravery check. So it's really good against low armies of destruction. Really bad against death and, and demon face chaos. Mm -hmm. And then he's got the uh, a star priest stars here pawn effects to just punk heroes. It's way more offensively oriented than my list was. Yeah, but it is not as offensively oriented in the same way that it can have that reach turn one it's playing high drop it probably prefers to double one to two and really punish you for coming in close to him yeah rather than um do what my list wants to do which i'll talk a little bit more about it when we talk to it yeah still no. a really cool list he was telling me he summons likes to summon rivers a lot and then hunters of Huanchi. super cool way different from what i summon uh his army also Beautiful. <laughs> yes, it's gorgeous. Uh oh, his rippers were a first turn. Let's baby. Yeah, <laughs> very effective at doing that. If um you put any kind of like one or two wound models near if there are one or two wound models near Maelstrom, that Maelstrom's popping. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's uh let's get that uh fourth place up on the screen. Fourth place is our very own Randy running yep. ogres. He uh changed things up. He was running the Rocket Tyrant list. This time he's running a um, a different, more classic Meat Fist list. He's got the Stonehorn with Arcane Tome and Rockman Elder. We've seen that before. Arcane Tome to give him Mystic Shield. Rockman Elder, so it's minus one to wound. It's a Stonehorn that runs in, does a bunch of damage, is really hard to kill. Yep. Slaughter Master being the general Gastromancer, so it knows the whole spell lore. And it knows Blizzard. Super dangerous threat if you get close to that. Yep. <clears throat> and then the Fire Belly that knows Billowing Ash, so he can get the whole minus one hit his around his core yeah and his iron blaster that kind of stays there he's got this like tiny little brigade or he can run the fire belly forward and just be like hey look 
all my iron guts because he's got two units of them and he's one. They're minus one to hit too. So they're a little bit tankier as they run through, charge, munch, eat you down. Yeah. Um, shout out to the Gorger Maw Pack. Um, Gorger Maw Pack is super cool. I watched these things do so much work over the weekend and every list that they were taken in. Um, they are awesome. Deep absolute, striking threats that can take away command points. Absolute steal for 220. They're super, super good. I love the Gorge Mob back. Um, I think it's I think it's really cool. And then the 20 novelers, which are just a great screen, front run, punish people who want to do a lot of movement. Mm-hmm. You can roll those four ups, you can get a lot of free damage. Yeah, so it's are- uh it's a much more traditional meat fit meat fist list than we than we've seen like uh with the rocket tyrants and in the right hands like randy's who's played a lot of ogres we see him do a 4-1 and make fourth place yeah we we talked about the meat fits all being very similar but you know pilot well get the right matchups bring a good list uh mm-hmm. gavin said it that's how you do well and yep here we go did well and it's a one drop he gets a determined turn prior. All right. Likely wants to give it away a lot of time. Force opponents forward. Let's uh, let's go to fifth place. Fifth place is this good old boy. Yep. Who bring? Who sacrifices the offensive might that Jose brought in exchange for a stronger board hold anvil? I approached the problem of Seraphon's castle getting rammed by Alpha. With not doing more damage. I tried that. Brought Pond Effects to LVO. And it was good, but I felt like she didn't do enough in certain matchups. She's pretty much there as like extra damage plus anti corn tech. And I was like, you know what? If I fight corn, I fight corn. Fuck it. Whatever. I exchanged her for a Bastilled on Arc of Subtech. Basically a two up save always that I can just throw up in the middle of the board. With that and the Troglodon, I have a huge mid board anvil presence. That says, like, you're not likely to kill these. I can cover a huge range of minus one to hit, make the chocolate not minus one to wound. Basildon with Mystic Shield is plus one to save. The art artifact on my Troglodon makes him plus one to save all the time. So I have two plus one to save. Uh, could potentially give something else another plus one to save. The Troglodon at the right moment could be plus four to save for a turn mm-hmm. with minus one to hit and wound and 14 wounds and occasionally with the six up ward like it just it's very hard to die it's very yes. hard to kill unless you've got like cruel boys or something and you're hot rolling them sixes i can't do shit about that nope. <laughs> or you charge with a crag doesn't do 36 mortal wounds like what are you gonna do <laughs> against most honest combat troglodon wins half the time yeah and then the bastildon like i said it, that one doesn't care about shooting so a lot of the times what i do is i give it fly and plus one to saving and shooting and I just auto run it 11 inches up the board. So it, it does that. Then I support it with the reach. People think the Trogodon's bad. Um, three, three mortal wounds to all your heroes across the board is still pretty good. Yep. Maelstrom, Comets Call, Celestial Deliverance uh, in your back line hurts plus the terrain bomb if you deploy near terrain. I, a lot of the times I like to take, I like to choose Defender put a lot of terrain near the deployment zones. So you're kind of forced to be around where I don't want you or where I want you to be. <laughs> and then I hold the anchor in front and I bomb you turn one, usually take out a little bit of key things, hopefully win priority for turn two, and then just decimate as much of your army as I can. Sorry. And if I can't decimate as much of your army as I can, I'm summoning skinks and I'm holding the board. Yeah, no, you uh, summoned summon 40 skinks against me. <laughs> in a nutshell, at least. Yep. <laughs> Alright, let's uh let's get sixth place up. Alright, All right, let's go back to the wheel. Back to the wheel. You thought we were done with the wheel. This has turned into unironically kind of our shtick. I don't get it. <laughs> Where's Dylan? I gotta we gotta put his ass on a wheel. <laughs> Ever salty, you did kill everything. Our game was super bloody. <laughs> I played I played our resident shitlord Brian a couple weeks ago at Atomic, and by the end of it we were left with I think 
less than 20 gut rippers total and flood raker so much sick. damage we did to each other <laughs> pretty sick all right we ready to spin that wheel yeah spin it spin the wheel Yeah, we're gonna go. It's my favorite part. Hey, I wonder, is he still here? He he is. He hey, is. he's still Hell here. Yeah. Thank you, Hilda Brandt. Dope. All right. <laughs> we will. We uh, Chair Grot will reach out to you and do the thing. Yes. Also, put sixth place up. We need to talk about Brian. I'm going to get started talking about the king of the narrative. The whole reason he's still around. He wants to hear us talk about him. So here's the deal. Cruel Boys is a is a pretty solid army. No, it's not. It, don't let that win rate fool you, man. That sub-50% win rate. Piloted by a solid player. That army fits so much goddamn shit in it. <laughs> it turns out you put all that on and it's still good. It's solid. Jesus Christ. We went through an entire edition of them getting points drops. Yeah. Because <laughs> here's Brian's list. I don't even really need to look at it. I know what it's got. It's got Gobsrack. Because Gobsrack is really good in the meta right now. Not only is that spell suite pretty solid toolbox, um, doing D6 mortal wounds to heroes that it kills, or that it unbinds with 3D6, it's pretty good. Then it has a Sludge Raker with uh, Ego Maniac, so it can pass off wounds to the 40 Gut Rippers that he has. Two Swamp Gala Shamans, so that he can do so that he can do Elixir on both of the either Elixir or Poison on both the Gut Rippers, depending on whether he needs to be offensive or defensive. Yeah. A Nash 2, so that only one Gut Ripper runs from Bravery uh, for each of the units, just for being near the guy. A, uh, a unit of Hobgrass to meet his battle line requirement, but also to just run, charge, do some damage, sneak an objective. He's got Probably some bolt boys still, right? Oh, he's got another unit of 10 hobgrots. So yeah, six man skewer bolt boys and two B skewer killbows for some shooting support fire from behind. Double battle regiment and acolytes. He's a four drop. Puts a ton of shit on the board. Controls so... the mid board extremely well. And man, if you're rolling hot, he's also killing your whole army. This shit's like, what, 150 <laughs> wounds? Something like that. It's, it's a lot of wounds. Like, Gut Rippers are a horde, and you think Horde Killer's going to kill it until you remember, hey, that's two wound models. Yeah. Two units of 20 are going to, are going to have a hard time getting removed. That army is not, like, the fastest army, but it also is fine just running into the middle of the board and saying, hey, come charge me, because I'm going to hurt you back. Right. And if you can't remove me, I'm removing you. There may be some games where you just can't roll sixes on damage at all, in which case you're relying on your massive wound total to hold objectives. So why why Nash Tooth and not on foot for the killer boss? Because the Nash Tooth is 110 points for a three up save ten wound hero cavalry that slaps. <laughs> Does he slap? Yeah. Oh, He's pretty good. Does he okay. Let's pull it up. Nash. Killer boss on Great Nash Tooth. Four attacks, three threes, minus one, two damage. Okay. Four attacks, three threes, minus two, two damage. Okay. And again, stops the bravery and plus one to hit rolls if it made a charge. Okay. So you can hit on twos. Maybe you could wound on twos if you take the inspired. I don't yeah. believe he did. I believe he took the dominable. Yeah, to stop the bravery. Yeah. On top of that, it's grinning blades, so he's, you're not visible uh, outside 12 inches, and you got Wog as your grand strat, which just means you need one of your battle line units, which are both units of Gut Rippers and the Hobgrots, or you need your general, which is the nearly unkillable Sludge Drinker beast, to be in the enemy's territory. Alright. I'm still trying to come to terms with it. Uh, we spent an entire edition laughing at Cruel Boys. Uh-huh. <laughs> and here we are, and I I did not think this faction would end up as the, you know, bring forty gut rippers and a shit ton of heroes. I always like, 
I thought it peaked at 12 Bolt Boys, and here we are. <laughs> no, it is it is no joke. It's got the wound density. It's got the damage. It's got um, it's got the toolbox. Like it can turn off wards. Got it can make Gobstrack move 14 inches, then another 14 inches, and just sting. Like don't underestimate Gobstrack in in combat either. It's got venom crushing weapons on like three of its four profiles. Mm-hmm. Like if he hits you, if he rolls a six on the tail, it's just D6 mortal wounds. <laughs> Straight up on top of any other attacks. And then uh while being a monster that can just roar you. Mm-hmm. And if needed, he can just super sneak you up the board, do his little thing, and then just run away. Right. Like, yeah, no, Gosfrex a five up save, but and a six up board, but Sometimes, some games, you just can't touch them. All right. Well, thank you, Brian, for reminding all of us that this uh, this is part of the Orc War Clans book. There's, there, there's a narrative with Cruel Boys and their narrative. God damn, this game, this army is not that bad. All right. All right, let's get, the, let's get seventh place up. Seventh place. Should be the Avangori list? Seventh place, I believe, is the Avangori list. Yes, James Matthew... James Matthews with from it's got a deer on it. This list is pretty simple. Yep. It's got Nagash. It's got a Vengorian Lord with Monstrous Might, Vile of Man's Core Venom on the Nightmare Saber and Flaming Weapon. So she's gonna slap. Yep. It's got two terror guys, 20 skeletons, a life swarm, and three fell bats, all in a one drop. Bro, this list has got me like Jackie Chan, like, whoa, list. Like what the fuck <laughs> is happening here? Brain huge. Right. Uh, it turns out this list can be solid with just good fundamental play. Like, I'm not going to lie. I don't know the ins and outs of what makes this list work. I talked to him afterwards. He's just like, everyone. And it went 4 1 with it. It's not that bad. And I'm like, Nagash is a huge support hero that makes those guys better. Um, the Felbats can help get objectives. The Terror guys can run around and still munch things. The skeletons go down, come up. Be and and the Vingorian Lord slaps like beyond that. I think it's just probably an army that trades really like that gets more bang out of its out of its units before they go down than anything else. I just, I'm gonna assume <laughs> stuck to the fundamentals, rolled sixes, killed heroes. Yeah, it turns out if you stick to the plan, it still works. Right. Roll sixes, kill the heroes. Stand on the circles. Yeah. Um, I, wish we could, I, I, I wish I could talk more about it, uh, James, but this shit literally is... I don't know how, but I love that you did. I love you got like, the 4-1 with it. It's awesome. Right? <laughs> Just terror guys. Look, cheap monsters. I know there's a monster's rampage um, in Aven- Avangori that the terror guys and the zombie dragons do. I just I assume he used it more than once. So like he can attempt to eat uh, attempt to eat models like if he rolls above their bravery, and then if you I, kill a model, they can get another activation. Yeah, that hey, it, that's pretty good. But it, it it really is super convoluted to pull off. Yeah. But nah, fuck it, man. Like, good on you, bro. This is this is out of the box. Yep. All right. Super cool to see it go. Forward. Let's get a uh, let's get eighth place up. In eighth place, we have the very same KO Kel said he faced in uh, round five yeah. from Kyle Emery. Now, yeah. the setup, the article, footnote, and the code. I know these words. I yep. do not remember what they mean, but I know they hurt me. Yep, F- fascist uh, rhetoric. Yes, exactly. Uh, without our ships we're not for the footnote honors everything for the code and trust to your guns for the amendment or for the article and then the amendment yep. what I do know is he's got a chemist an admiral and a navigator to get some extra rend do some extra stuff the voice and orb is I believe the um, the once per game auto unbind no, that they that... can have access to no the, the void stone orb is the, uh, the null the wait what? no well, you know, yeah, no, yeah, you're right. The, vo- uh, the yeah. void stone orb is the um, scroll thing. I don't mind. Yeah, I was thinking null stone orb. No, he doesn't have it. Yep. Um, 
the storm uh, that is on the chemist to get the the icon. Yeah. So he has an auto unbind and then a fo- and then an unbind that he can just keep chaining if he gets it. Yeah. And then uh, the admiral's got storm color, which I believe is what makes the thunderer's battle line, because he's not in the sub faction that makes the battle line, because he's in Baraknar. So I believe that's a necessity to bring the um the fifteen thunderers. And the twenty with, along with the twenty Arcanauts. Mm-hmm. and then he brings the Ironclad, the gun, the Grunstock gun hauler, the Ironclad party boat. This is a single party boat list. He puts the he puts the Thunderers, he puts the Ironclad, he puts the Thunderers in the Ironclad, he puts the uh, the three heroes in the Ironclad, and he says <laughs> this guy's gonna just and then and then win that way. The uh, Arcanauts are gonna stick nearby or hold objectives, and then the Saucy Tech in the list. The Questor Soul Swarm. I yeah. like them. They're pretty much an independent unit. You know, you've played with them. They got the ability to teleport once per turn. They mm-hmm. just do a bunch of attacks. They hold object as well. It's so awesome. I, uh, I talked to them a little bit about it, and it's an interesting pick in this because it is a decent screen, six dudes on 40s, mm-hmm. uh, that can teleport in front of the Ironclad. To act as a screen anywhere the Ironclad chooses to go once per game. It makes sense. Um, and talking with Kel, he used the uh, the Arcanauts plus the Swole Sworn to create a little bunker from which he dispensed many dice shots. That makes sense. Say yeah. like, hey, you can try to come to the to the Ironclad, but this is going to be in the way. I'm going to unleash hell on you, and I don't have to worry about actually engaging it. No, so I mean, he almost took a five zero. Um, lost the guy that won the tournament. So we said it in list review. Very, yeah, power- yeah very powerful <laughs> list. Did mm-hmm. what it wanted to and got close to a five zero. So okay, it was pretty one dimensional, but it's really good in its in its dimension. Yeah, because if we check the score, he didn't lose against Kel by a lot. No, I think so, it was a pretty pretty close game. Uh, yeah, he got sixteen points. Kel got 25. Nine I mean, that, points. I mean, that's three rounds of solid play, so... It's nine points on, on a map like Power Flux, which can scale in the late game. Yeah. So, but yeah. Jim, good shit to you. Um, yeah. Other people hate to see it, but I didn't have to play against it, so I love to see it. <laughs> Yeah, Vince is saying that he faced it round three and pretty much got tabled. Yeah. Pretty right. early, which is, yeah, not easy to do so. Like, All right. We got Marco with the blood tooths. All right. Tell Marco's our uh, very own from our uh, from our own club, Marco Hernandez, who is a uh, orc and git main. He, you either see him playing Iron Jaws or you see him playing gets. There's, he doesn't play anything else. I don't. I think he has some cruel boys now because obviously they're orcs running a pretty classic blood tooth list. He's got the mock rusher, the gore hack and chopper destroyer, fast and combo. We've seen for three years now. Yep. Got a weird knob shaman with shaman of the chilled lands as his general. That's the different part that we're not used to seeing. Not that uncommon in the in the current book because you know access to blizzard is really good. Um, lets him have spell casting savant. As an option for his grand strat, which you still don't take, like Marco didn't because Wog is just better. Yeah. <laughs> but while well, uh, he could, with the great big, great big green hand of Gork, last second teleport his weird knob shaman into the opponent's territory to get <laughs> to get his grand strategy. Yeah. <laughs> it was some tech that I actually really like. Um, in addition to you know teleporting six pigs twelve inches away, by destroying them forward uh, nine inches and making three inch charges. Pretty good. Yep. He also took a second spell enhancement, which is interesting, so that he could have. Um... Oh no, he didn't. Never mind. I was misreading the list. Then he's got two war chanters. What you start every Iron Jaws list with: fix and beat, get him beat. You never take anything else. Plus one damage on two units of pigs is pretty good, or six pigs and a mock crusher. Then he's got three pigs, three pigs, three pigs, six pigs, and ten brutes. Ten brutes slap. They hurt really nope. hard, and they're a slow screen to like move forward and then capture something. 
The pigs are the bread and butter of running around doing the damage. He's got Endorian Acolytes. Because he has a second weird knob shaman that I didn't. Yep. That's what I'm seeing. Missing yep. it. Two weird knob shamans, nose bash and lads, great bring hand of cork, and same for the other. So he did take a second spell enhancement. I'm not that blind, only a little blind. So yeah. Mock Rusher, two war chanters, two shamans, up to 15 pigs, and 10 brutes. High drop, Iron Jaws Fist twice with all the pigs and the brutes. And a warlord and Andorian acolytes. Oh, well, I mean, my man Marco plays this list all the time. He knows what he likes. He knows what does well, and he's like, "Fuck it, I've played this shift three years straight, and people still lose to it." It pretty much. It's a similar concept that I've seen him running for years. It's just tailored to work in the GHB. Yeah. Two weird knob shamans with with Andorian acolytes is better than people want to give it credit for. It's uh, for a while now playing this GHB better than what I was even giving it credit for. It wasn't until like recently that I looked. I was like, you know what? Weird knob shamans are pretty good. It wasn't until I saw them get played in big wog that I was like, you know what? That's not that bad. And seeing two here, I'm like, yeah, I can understand and respect it. Well, um, of course, I caught it during list review, right? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> let's uh let's get 10th place up here we'll go over that and then we'll call it there yep 10th place is our very own nick swap i know he's in the chat with this god seekers list man fuck this list now here's the here's the, the beautiful thing is i read the primer about this list that he posted in the slambo discord and it was beautiful and um i'm gonna butcher it because i forgot like half of it already god seekers basically says your army goes zoom I think it's his keeper can move something like his keeper or Sigwell can move something like 40 inches in like one turn. And you're, it's basically inescapable. Every, everything is a hammer. At least all the, every, every big hero is a hammer. The demonets are good screens, but they're also fast. They help balance the mortal demon count from Celeste. And I know Nick's going to be in the chat telling me some things, uh, telling me some things that I'm, gonna totally forget and butcher he's got the bliss barb seekers helping the extra minus one to save is really good he's got the slick blade seekers which i honestly for the life of me can't remember what they do the chaos war shrine slanash mark is really good for helping sigvolt get extra charge and provide a ward for itself the fane um exists as a terrain piece yeah i mean <laughs> I, I played against this um he gives Siggy and the Keeper a 3d6 charge between one of the spells of the Chaos War Shrine. Um, they have rerolls to charge because of mm-hmm. God Seekers. Yep. And I think the Keeper can get run in charge? Um, I believe it can. Uh, Nick coming in being like, the Seeker, the Slick Blades hit very fast and very with high rend. So they're just super good in melee. Yep. Uh, he melee has... Gun. He has the reduce your armor by one sex horses mm-hmm. and melee sex horses, mm-hmm. and he's gonna. F- and then the rest is a thousand points to stand on circles and support. Yep, it um, is. Uh, it is the truest expression of chaotic orcs. Uh, it will. It will find you. It will hunt you down, and in a lot of cases, it'll kill you. It's like yeah. all denying wards with all of its attacks. Um, it's not. It doesn't have a high cap. On its uh, on its number of attacks, so three d six means you can max out at eighteen attacks if you just roll super hot on the charge. <laughs> Sigvald caps at twelve. Does he cap at twelve? I thought he didn't have a high. I thought he had a low. I thought he was minimum five. He caps at twelve. He caps at twelve. Well, either way, twelve attacks from Sigvald is still scary. Uh, <laughs> no, he caps oh, at eighteen. I was right, Joe. No, that's <laughs> ah! uh, but yeah, uh, the keeper giving him the double tap. So plus you pick him as your uh, euphoric killer. So mm-hmm. he gets the depravity. It's really dumb. It's really yeah. beautiful. Um, and people that have not played against this are not going to respect it. This guy. It's the kind and- of list. It's the kind of list that rewards someone who knows the army really well and who knows them really well. Uh, but yeah, no, it's it's going to come from across. Across the map, another zip code is going to hit you with an RKO and maybe hit you with a double turn. Nick wants you to know that he just rolled the 12 against you. He could have rolled the 18. Ah, oh, shut up, Nick. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
But yeah, yeah, it's like looking at it again after the event and re- after reading Nick's Primer, this list is even cooler to me than I thought it was. I liked it before the tournament. I definitely am one of the people that I would say I like I didn't respect it as much. Um, but it's super cool. It, it's really neat to see it do a fun. It is really cool to see a list like this yeah. built by a guy who's been playing the army for a long time. And for him to go out and kind of like get rewarded for that kind of like knowledge and preparation. I mean, he uh, he saw 60 bliss barbs and he was like, let's do something different. He and said 60 bliss barbs. Fuck it. I'm coming for your face. We, we, we did more people that are like, nah, let's uh, let's buck the meta more. I, I mean, like I, I hear troglodons are bad. So, you know. Troglodons are bad. I hear troglodons are just trash, man. I mean, you can't cast all your damage through them anymore when they're not even man. All right. But <laughs> there we go. Um, there's top 10. Truthfully, about half of these I did not expect to be here at the end of the day. So play your, uh, play your list well. Roll sixes, kill heroes. Roll sixes, kill heroes, stand in the circles. If you want to get better at Warhammer, stick to those three things. Everything else will come your way. Right. You'll figure everything else out. All right. So everybody that's still here, thank you all so much for staying. Uh, it's been about two hours, a little bit shorter than our normal shows, but mm-hmm. a little bit longer than we expected. Yeah. Uh, but that's okay. Please follow us on socials. Um, the Weird Cast Twitter. We have an Insta, which we are working on. And I typically post in everyone's discords, so watch your shit. Mm-hmm. At the weird cast. At the weird cast. Find weird cast. It's got to be the weird cast with the da Duh. in front. The weird. Want to follow? If you want to follow me personally, I'm at 16 er Ramos. Joe just uses the weird cast account, so yep. take that for what you will. <laughs> so all right. Uh... They have our YouTube coming up regularly. So we're at yep. youtube.com slash DeWeirdCast just to steal your thunder, Joe. <laughs> yep. When are we, when's that video coming live, though? Thursday. Uh, all Thursday. Of our, all, of our, all of our VODs will go live on YouTube on Thursdays. So if you kind of like what we've been doing, if you want to see what the other lists were at this event, go check out the, uh, go check out the list reviews that should be up on YouTube. Yep. We did two of them, one for each half of the Grand Alliances, essentially. If you kind of want to see some gameplay from us, those videos are up as well. We have an old world video we did a few weeks back that's pretty fun. Yep. Uh, we'd appreciate if you go. Give us a subscribe, like the videos, comments, tell us what you thought. Yep. So, Cherigrat sure. is saying that he will also update with lists, at least in future videos. You'll make sure to include the lists in the description, at least to a pastebin. We have, I believe, next week is going to be our next stream. Yep. I believe we're doing an old world stream again. Yes. Okay. We're going to do an old world stream. Armies to be determined. But we really like doing the first one, so we kind of want to do another one. Break right. for this GT. Uh, as a... Uh... As we kind of wind down from 3rd edition, leading into 4th edition, we're going to try and touch other systems, uh, really kind of do a smattering of stuff. We're still going to do AOS, but we want to we want to really enjoy what's available while we're kind yeah. of in this downtime. Oh, yeah. It's going to be it's going to be fun. You can expect to see some newer stuff on stream soon. With that, I think we've touched on everything. Triumph and Treachery. We are definitely going to look into it. At least I will. And yep. we'll see if we can make it work. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you so much for sticking around. Thank you to our sponsors. Yep. Battleworks.com with an E and their giveaways mm-hmm. and what they do for us. And thank all of you, most importantly. Uh, like and follow if you haven't already. See you guys. Love you. Have a great thank night. You. Good night. Good night.